I hit myself in the head so many times, and I'm like, you know what? This guy is so true, man. Appreciate your your show and and all that you do for for getting guys uh, on straight and narrow. If you can hear Tom's voice, you better listen up. You better listen up good because he has got this thing nailed. Tom, Tom, listen. Uh, I was just hearing the advice that you were giving the other guy, and man, you know what you're talking about, buddy. 21 years old, and uh, I just want to tell you that MySpace girls are so easy. Oh like, yes. I actually have a MySpace girl booty call on my lunch break today. <laughs> <laughs> Did she show you where her space was? Girls love the bad boys. For some that's reason. just the way it is. That's why I am a bad boy. And that's why I love you, Tom. There we go, Katie. I know. Next time you decide to be really bad when I'm in town, let me know. I know. Sign the rap. I'll sign you right up. I won't even use ink, if you know what I mean. I've been married for 28 years, and about three years ago, my wife was saying how she's going to leave me, you know, because uh, she was bored. So I just started treating her the way that uh, you talked about, and uh, boy, things turned around real quick. Oh, did they really? Yeah. You know, I started kind of being an a-hole, and uh, boy, she turned around real quick. You know, of course, she's going to miss out on, like you say, the paycheck and a little security there. So uh, thanks for listening to you. Things worked out pretty good. I took your advice and I DTD'd. <laughs> How did that work out? Did she freak? Actually, yeah, she did. She told me she was going to kill me and everything. I love when they say that. Oh, yeah, and I told her. I said, go ahead and cry for me. I'm over it, and I want to see your tears. Ooh, I like your style. Thank you. Well, I learned it from you. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said hello. Yes, hi. Now I'm saying nothing. Oh, Okay. Waiting for you to begin talking. Oh, I was just calling earlier about the, like, you made the comment about... You were about calling me. earlier? I mean, are you calling now? Yes. Oh, but who were you calling early? I was calling you guys. <laughs> well, you said you were calling early. Well, yeah. Did I already talk to you? No, I haven't talked to you yet, but I, okay, I called for the reason Oh, that I mean, that's I, like those people who pre-board the flight at the airport? How can you pre-board? But how do you, what do you board before you board? <laughs> You know what? The Angels are uh, a force to beckon with. Uh, that's, that's true. There's 16 games up. Force to beckon so with, yes. Oh, but also, Tom, you got to look back at when... Um, all attempts are purpose. I do believe in Guardian Angels. You do. So what so happened to the Guardian day. Angels of the people on Metrolink? You know, Tom, I don't know what happened to their Guardian Angels that day, but I know that... They all them took the day off? They didn't take their day off, but the people that survived... Maybe, it, maybe the Guardian Angels were sending a text message. You can get herpes uh, when you use a condom, but it's much less likely. Yeah, well, I do have a newly formed pump sensor. My question is, you know, what's my course of action after that? Well, you well, might have to move to New York because one out of four people's got the herpes there. No, I love my West Coast. <laughs> you know, they got uh, when they said in New York they got more culture out there. Uh, <laughs> they didn't tell you that culture was under a microscope. How do you not know you stink like that? I don't know. I mean, even men can get that way. But yes, I know women can. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I won't go there. Come on. Just take a hose and hose it down. There's something called douche. <laughs> That's right. I was saying that to Dean the other day. <laughs> How disgusting. From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Best part of my day. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that he is. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Here we are with wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything goes here. Anything at all. Anything can happen on wide open telephones, and it frequently does. And the more outrageous, the better. I mean, just remember, I'm going to be posting this in the next few days, okay? For those of you who've never heard the old George Carlin routine called the seven words you can never say on television, and I recommend you reference it if you can hear it online somewhere or get access to it, 
Please do. It gives a handy-dandy list of the words you absolutely can't say. And um, when we say be outrageous, anything goes here. The, the, the one limitation of that is that there are words you can't say. The F word, the S word, the C word. And you know what words these are. And the FCC doesn't allow them. So when I say be outrageous, it's except for that. We have a zero tolerance policy towards these words. Say them once and we hang up on you and we bleep the last 70 seconds of everything you said. Yeah! So you could very well have gotten all that trouble to call in, talk to Dean, sit on hold, get on the air, and then uh, the whole thing wiped out by one F word. So be outrageous, but, you know, be professional like I am. Okay? And when I say be professional, I'm telling you, I love the F word. I love it with all my heart. And I use it copiously. But when I'm on the air, I know I can't use it. And you can't either. Save it for YouTube or save it for your Facebook page or whatever. But don't be using it here, okay? Because we're just going to wipe it clean. And then we're going to wipe the phone clean of you. <laughs> it's that simple. But it is wide open telephones, and it's certainly unpredictable. We never know what direction it's going in. Uh, many things we can talk about that we discussed on the air this week. We we had Professor John Banshaf the third on the program, discussing his various lawsuits against companies like McDonald's. He thinks that uh, we can sue our way out of obesity. He's filing one lawsuit after another. Uh, we talked to people who thought that they had been uh, protected from harm by a guardian angel. Because there was a survey that said that over half of all Americans believe this has happened to them. We, uh, we had another edition of HR. HR standing, of course, for Human Resources. TV has ER. We have HR. And we had people from Human Resources Departments calling in and telling us about the most... Hair curling, embarrassing, uncomfortable conversations they've had with employees. Uh, we had the people who decided to try dating not on Match.com or eHarmony.com or JDate. They decided to go right to Craigslist, where it's open to everybody who's on, you know, everybody who's on the child molester list. What is that, Megan's Law? Every child abuser. Every uh, criminal, every serial rapist, and anybody else, I mean, because there's no credit card, no checking your identity, nothing. Anybody can get on there. And so we had horror stories from people who had dated on Craigslist. Uh, we talked about the last two weeks of the baseball season to find out if you're watching baseball and, you know, what, uh, what you think about it at this point in time. Uh, we talked about women who, uh, when they get to a certain age, say 28 to 33 years old, uh, they um, have already decided that if they can't find somebody to love, they're going to find somebody to sire their children. And you could unwittingly become the sperm donor. We talked about that. Uh, we talked about the... Uh, well, we, we, we started a conversation about the uh, father who uh, came home and found his her teenage daughter's boyfriend naked and uh, clobbered him with a metal pipe <laughs> and then we talked about uh, people like you who might have got caught by the parents trying to do the daughter yeah uh, we uh, talked about uh, women having uh, no female friends that's a red flag if I ever heard of one and of course we spent uh, quite a bit of time talking about the economy and the stock market and how that affects you, because uh, in case you don't already believe it, it is definitely going to have a direct effect on you. Okay, now we can talk about any of that or anything else we didn't put in the mix this week. It could be anything we discussed on the air this week, like those issues we just talked about. Anything you think we should have talked about. Uh, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. You can talk about how completely unreasonable I am. It's all fair game long as you're absolutely fascinating. And by the way, let me add this. Uh, if for some reason you think you are not part of our audience, 
if you think you are not welcome here, I want to put out a special invitation to people who feel they are not welcome on this program. That could be anything from women to people who are devoutly religious to children to, yes, Dean, old people. You know what? I will take on all comers during this program. Yes, all comers. So even if you think you are unwelcome on this program, we're going to take you on. So Dean will apply the same screening techniques on this program, this here edition of the Tom Likas Show. Uh, so if you're not fascinating, he's going to kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Uh, but uh, we're going to put out a special invitation to anybody who thinks they're not part of our audience. Anybody who thinks they're not part of the target demographic. Because God only knows, who knows? Maybe one day we'll just get rid of the target demographic and we'll talk to anybody who calls in about anything. Anything could happen with anyone. And we'll try it and see what happens. Because I'm that kind of a guy. You know what? I'm an experimenter. I'm a decider, like the president. That's what I am. I made this decision right now. So uh, if you would like to participate, if you think you can make something outrageous happen, if you think you can hold an entire nation spellbound by the mere sound of your voice, it's time to put up or shut up. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. My ex-girlfriend, she says the biggest mistake I ever made was introducing you to Tom Likas, but it was the biggest gift that she ever gave me. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Wide open telephones. On the Tom Likas Show. Okay? We'll say hello here to Fareed on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement, Fareed? Hey, how are you doing, Tom? Do you care? Yeah, I do, man. I listen to your show every day. First time, long time. I'm doing great. All right. Um, I had a couple questions about uh, financial advice. I'm 19 years old, and um, I've heard on the radio millions of times you don't need any money to start, and I was wondering how I would be able to get... You don't need any money to start what? Uh, getting into the real estate business. To get into the real estate business... Yeah, I'd uh, invest money in there with the whole foreclosure market. Wait a minute. What, what university are you attending? I see here you're 19 years old. Um, I'm attending a community college. I'm planning on transferring to UC Berkeley and from there going to grad school. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, all your bills paid, your college paid for, your books paid for, your rent paid for, your living expenses paid for? Uh, everything paid for. I live at home with the parents. They're going to put me through till I'm 21. You have no debts? No debts. I work over the summer. I, uh, yeah, live at home. Got no expenses yet. And when you say you're going to get into the real estate business, what exactly are you talking about? I mean, I hear like, all the time it's a buyer's market and you can uh, profit from the industry. Forget without- about it. Forget about that. Now, if you were telling me that you wanted to buy a house and live in it for five years or more, then I would say this is a good time to consider that. But not for you. Not for me. No. What do you know about the real estate business? Um, Not that much. That's why I'm calling in. Well, why am I going to tell you with a three-minute phone call? You've already told me enough, Tom, and now I know not to start. No, no. I mean, the point is, do you see what's happening right now? You don't know anything about the real estate business. You don't know what it costs to, to buy a house, to own a house, to maintain a house. You don't know about property taxes, insurance, maintenance. Right. Well, you, you have no expertise in this area at all. Right. So what are you watching, like these infomercials on TV? Well, no, I even hear it, uh, advertisements on this station. Telling you what? 
uh, the buyer's market, and there's never been a better time. You That's, don't need any money that, to start and all this. Well, start, well put it this way. Um, <laughs> it is a buyer's market for sure. That's true. But it's not, you know, the point is everybody's not, not, not equipped or not educated to do that. Right. Now, again, if you told me I want to buy a condo for myself to live in it, they, it's a buyer's market. Uh, if you can get a mortgage, which may not be that easy, but if you can get a mortgage, this might be a good time to consider that. So you're saying if I have the means to own a property, now would be a good time, but I don't, so not. Well, that's my point. I mean, look, <laughs> and then you're going to do this business and it's not going to distract you from going to school? Right. It's not going to distract you from getting a degree? Right. What were you planning on doing with these properties? Renting them out? Sure. <laughs> Was that your plan or you didn't even know what you were going to do? I mean... You don't have a plan, do you? Entirely sure, no. My plan to go to school right now. Right. Because let me tell you something, pal. You're trying to study for your degree, and somebody calls you from your property, which is nowhere near where you live, and says, my toilet is clogged. That's my problem. It's going to get in the way of you studying for the finals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you really want that? No, I don't. You're not ready for that. And I don't know what ad you're talking about, and I don't really care. My recommendation to you, don't ever buy real estate without putting money into it. Right. Don't do it. I mean, my plan was... Uh, That's how we got in all this trouble, people buying property they couldn't afford. With money they didn't have. With money the bank didn't have. With money the mortgage company didn't have. That's how we got this trouble. I mean, I wanted to put at least twenty percent down on a house once I'm ready to buy. But you're not ready to buy. You don't have twenty percent of anything. <laughs> How much money do you have? About a grand. A grand. So that would mean you'd have to buy a house that is five thousand uh, dollars. Where in Southern California are they selling houses for five thousand dollars? Right. All right. You couldn't live in somebody's mailbox for five thousand dollars. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks for the advice, Tom. Just trying to be helpful. Yeah, you are. Can you uh, take me out with a thank you, Jesus, gangster style? Well, I, I, I think that's one after another, but sure. Thank you, Jesus. Biatch. Okay, 1-800-5800-TOM. But yeah, it is a buyer's market. There's no doubt about it. And it's going to get, um, it's going to get, uh, more of a buyer's market, uh, before it becomes more of a seller's market. So if you're thinking about buying a house, you know, you've been waiting for the opportunity. I would say the clock has begun ticking. This is your opportunity. And the opportunity may get even a little better in the next few months. Or it may not. No one's very good at predicting the bottom of the market. But I would certainly say this would be the time to start looking. It would. But I'm also saying to you that if you're planning on buying a house in a city you love, on a street you're crazy about, in a neighborhood you're in love with, where you can envision yourself being there at least five years from now and maybe more. If you can't, forget it. Cut down your expectations. Pare down your life, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? Simplify your life. Don't make it more complicated. This is not the time. Economy sucks. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Israel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Okay, so I have a quick question for you. Um, I have a girlfriend, and... Um, well, how old are you? I'm 20. Holy Christ, what are you doing? Okay. I've so you've got no you, game. I've been listening to you for now about three years. Right. And I've had my fun... You've had your fun. Already at 20, you've done everything there is to do. 
No, 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 no. Well, let me tell you something. My girlfriend right now, she's basically like the exception to almost sure every single she rule. Is. Yes, I'm sure she is. That's what everybody says. No, I can give you examples. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Like, no, you can't. She, she's bi, and she goes out, and we, like, I used to be a pimp, you know, getting girls, different girls back and forth now, here and there. She combines forces with me now, and she actually helps me get some of the girls that I couldn't get by my own. Because I, I didn't say you can't. We, we, I didn't say you can't date somebody like that. No, we recruit other girls to have threesomes with us. Great. I didn't say you can't do that. I said, why does she have to be your girlfriend? Um, it, it was a long story, but like it, what it, it boils down to is you're a little boy with no game, and you just said you have no game because these are girls you couldn't get on your own. No, I and so in it, order to get a chick like that, you have to uh, pretend to be her boyfriend. Okay. I guess you're right. But my main question... I know was, I'm right. My, 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 okay. Well, I was going to say, my main question was, um, she gets the birth control shot every, every three months as supposed to, and I'm physically there. I'm in the room when she gets it. Now, I wanted to know if it's okay to still have unprotected sex with her. I if wouldn't. I pull out. Uh, forget the time. forget the pull out method, okay? Okay. The pull out method is for people who are forty and up who can actually control themselves. Okay. It's not for you. Alrighty. So and forget what about that. with the shot, if I'm physically there seeing her get it every three months. Doesn't matter. I'm look, somebody who is bisexual probably uh -huh. is not monogamous. Okay. Okay, they can't be. Look at just the name bisexual. Like you can you can't be monogamous and be bisexual. Well, like I said, she's the exception to most of the rules, and I know you well, don't. Believe I know me you on believe that, that. No, I don't, because I've heard it all before. Well, like she specifically, whenever she she never has sex with chicks on her own. Like, That's she what she tells always, you. Always tell a chick, no matter what, she always tell them. Well, you know. No, you know, if I'm you don't problem, know I... what she tells chicks, no matter what. You know what she says to you. Well, I mean, I, I, well, I mean, okay, I've seen some, like mo most cases. You don't that, know about. That, how do you know it's most cases? How do you know there aren't a whole gaggle of chicks that she's doing when uh, you don't see it? How do you know? You don't. That doesn't really bother me if she like has sex with other chicks. No, I mean, I, like... but, all right. Guess what? Those other chicks might be having sex with heroin addicts, drug addicts. Of other kinds, you know, meth addicts. Okay. Other drugs can be shot. And maybe they're having sex with other bisexual people, like bisexual guys. Well, do you ever uh, think about she's, that? She's, she well, she's not attracted to bisexual guys at and all. I didn't she's say like... she is. What if she's with a girl who's attracted to bisexual guys, okay. or has a bisexual boyfriend? You don't know who these girls have slept with. Okay. You don't. And that ma that makes sense. But like, yeah. But I was just saying. So no. Even still. Are you going to argue with me? Huh? Did you call me to to get advice or to argue with me? No. Well, uh, more more or less advice. You know. So I, I gave you advice. No. The answer is no. So condom all the time, no matter what. Always. Because she's just... You're going to argue with me again? No, no, I, I You're arguing with me you know. now. No. The answer is no, period. Okay. No. By the way, at some point, those shots wear out. And you don't know when they will wear out or why. Okay. If she gains five pounds or ten pounds, maybe the shot wears out a little sooner. Mm -hmm. For example... We usually stop at about a month beforehand. I, you know, just there there is no science to this, son. Okay. No, the answer is no. Bisexuals are sluts. Sluts sleep with anybody and everybody. And they usually sleep with other sluts. Okay. 
because I mean, whenever we like recruit chicks, we always use a condom no matter what. And she is she is ten times more adamant than I am. Wait, you I'm gonna condom. I'm gonna let me tell you something. Okay. I'm gonna do this as cleanly as I can. And I'm gonna hope you're mature enough. Uh, to understand the graphic undertone of it without my having to say it, okay? Okay. The way women have sex with each other, you know what way that is, right? Yes. Okay. Um, moist membranes touch other moist membranes. Okay. Don't they? Yes, they do. Right. There's no condom that can hold that back, is there? No. Right. I don't care if you're using a condom. I care about the bisexual, occasional dabbler in drugs who your girlfriend brings home who has had sex with a bisexual guy who you don't know. Right. Don't you ever think about that? No, you don't. Because you're a little boy. Yeah. Immature. I'm, I'm no bothering to think about the danger or the future or what could happen to you. Well, well, the, the main reason, like, I, you know, I wanted to, you know, in a sense, in, a, in more sense, get you more, like, you know, understanding on the whole situation because she really doesn't ever leave her house. Oh, my God. Ever. So, let me ask you a question. When she brings home a girl, do you know who that person is? Um, yes. You because do. When we go out you do. So you know the everybody they've slept with. No. And you've seen every medical report on every person who has penetrated them. No. Right. Okay. I, that makes sense. Now. You don't know anything. Okay. That, that that puts a little more light on the subject. Are you that? But the point is, son, you're an adult. Are you that stupid at this point? Seriously. No, you're I, not 15, I, son. You're an adult. Right. You know, I, that, that's the main thing. So I'll, I'll take your advice on that. And, you know, I was just... And by the way, when you're with the other chicks, you, they, who knows if they're using birth control? Oh, no, with other chicks, no. I, I always, always use condoms. Well, the point I make it to you is, even then, there's a risk if the condom breaks, if the condom leaks, if the condom slips... You have you no know, guarantee of getting away scot free. None. Right. So, so what am I supposed to do with the other chicks? Just not have sex with them, or what? I'm just telling you. Well, because there is like, no risk free experience. So you must minimize the risk. Anytime you have an opportunity to minimize the risk, that's why you wear a condom every time. Mm -hmm. With your girl, with other girls, that's what you did. Okay. Period. And you don't be a little boy and start arguing about it. No, no, I'm not. Like, like that's the whole reason I called. I, I just wanted to make sure that it was okay. And now that you told me, like, about that, like, I never really thought but about it. You had no idea that that was possible? No, when you go to bed yeah, with a yeah. girl, you, you just assume that you're the first guy they've been with? You're the first person they've slept with? No. Girls who engage in this kind of behavior, they're not virgins. They're not even close. Right. They've experimented with people with a lot more experience than you have, which also means they're a lot more likely to have stuff you won't want to catch. Well, I just thought it was more or less ten times harder to, uh, like, for female to female contract a... We're not talking about female to female. Why do you assume that every time your girl brings home a girl that she's a lesbian? Your girl's not a lesbian. No, well, I mean... Your, like girl, your girl has sex with a man. You. Right. So what makes you think the girls she brings home haven't had sex with a man? Or many men? Right, but, like, if I'm using a oh. condom, it's no different my, than oh my, if I was oh my. single. But do you understand that, are there times when your girl has sex with another girl? Uh huh. You're standing there watching. And you're thinking, I am quite the stud. Cause there's my girlfriend and she's having sex with a girl. Look at that. You've done that, right? Uh, no, usually I'm involved, but like not just standing there. She's having sex. You're, you've got a condom. She's got nothing. 
Right, and that, that's what I was saying. Like, Think it I, up. You know, I thought it was extremely hard for, like, say, the girl that we recruit to contract to my girlfriend. I, I'm pounding the desk, son. Just shut up for a minute, would you? Okay. There you are, participating in a three-way. Okay? Mm -hmm. Sometimes there you are with your little condom. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the two girls are doing something to each other with no condom. Right. Right? Now, after you're done having the three-way, 12 hours later, there you are in bed together with your girlfriend. And you say to yourself, you know what? I don't need a condom because I saw my girlfriend get a birth control shot. But your girlfriend just had sex with somebody who's had sex with who knows how many other people. Right. With no protection at all. Right. Right? Yeah. That makes sense. Don't you ever think about these things? No. Because you are immature. And you're really too young to be having this kind of relationship. But you're going to do it anyway. Yeah, for the most part, like uh, I, I still plan on continuing the relationship because right. every everything you've ever taught me, like, sh like even like, let me give you an example. She told me she brought it up to me. She goes, "I don't care what the situation. We're getting a prenup if we if we ever decide to get married." Oh my god! And no. like you know, I don't plan on getting married at least until I'm oh, yeah. 28, and that's if and I... That's going to be great, too, because there's, there's another thing you haven't thought ahead about. So there you are, five years from now, you're 25, she's 23, you're married, and you're living on some cul-de-sac somewhere in the San Fernando Valley, and now you're having a kid, and there's your wife, the bisexual, <laughs> and your kid. That's always great for the kid to be around. Well, I mean, fr from this advice that you're giving me, like, I'll use a condom all the time. That I mean, from now on, no matter what, I'll, I'll use the condom. That's the main thing I wanted to figure out about. So, I mean, like, there's like a 99% chance there's going to be no kid unless this condom slips or break. And that's if, for some reason, it's in that gap of when she d is not on the birth control. Well, I also don't want you to get the crud, son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Just imagine your girlfriend. Where does she find these skanks anyway? Where does she pick them up? Well, we we actually both like go out looking and where stuff like, at clubs and stuff. Clubs, okay. So you're at a club and you meet a complete stranger. Mm -hmm. Okay, a complete stranger who just had a fight with her boyfriend, the heroin addicted musician, who she had a fight with because he's with a different woman every night. So you bring this girl home, and you don't know who she is, and you don't know who she's been with, or who her boyfriend has been And then your girlfriend, without any protection of any kind, proceeds to have direct contact with her moist parts. And there you are, beaming proudly about what a stud you are. And you have no idea who this girl's boyfriend has been sleeping with. No idea! So at this point, it's not really about kids, it's more about diseases. It's about all of it. Unless you think that you're a good-for-nothing loser, and that's what you will always be, that you will never have a life worth living, that you will never have success, you'll never have money, you'll never achieve anything. Unless you think your life is going to amount to nothing, you use a condom every time, and that's it. Okay. I can do that. And this is not because I could care less about AIDS epidemics in Africa or things like that. It had nothing to do with it. I'm talking about your future. Are you a perennial loser? Will you be a loser the rest of your life? Will you ever accomplish anything? I plan on it. I mean, I'm going to school right now and everything, so... Well, then, why don't you make sure you're around to see it? Okay. So I, uh, I plan on using the condom from now on. At least we got something out of this conversation. Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like this. In this day and age, 
For a man to get married, he's only looking to lose. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5-800-TOM. Christina, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Good. Um, I'm calling about the prenuptials you talked about earlier in the week, about people living in your house and stuff like that. I think it's a great idea. I um I did have that in a prenup. Yeah, I wish I would have done it. <laughs> no family members will live here. No family members will be lent money under any circumstances. No family members will be gifted with money. No family members will be co-signed for by either party. You ever think about that? Yeah. Like what happened? What is that noise in the background? Who is that? Oh, uh, it's the neighbor. It's what? The neighbor. <laughs> tell him to shut up. You're on the radio. Okay. Let's see. Uh, tell I'm him. On the, shut I'm up. Talking to Tom Likas. Who? Tom Likas. Tom Likas. Yeah. None of his goddamn business. Tell him to shut up. You're on the air. Tell him. <laughs> so what's up? Tell him that. <laughs> I don't know him that well. Then walk away or something. We're trying to have a conversation here. All right, sorry. Why do you have to stand next to this guy? <laughs> huh? Why do you have to stand next to this guy? We're on the radio. Sorry, not my fault. He walked over. Good. So, have you ever thought about that? What happens if your new husband decides to co-sign on a loan for some loser family member? Yeah, I know that sucks. So you have to say no. Yeah. No, I was married, and I wish I would have gotten the prenup. And you're getting married again already? Oh, uh, not yet. Why? I don't know. What's the rush? I'm not rushing. Me and my ex broke up four years ago. You're already talking about a prenup. Well, yeah, because I'm seriously considering it if I ever do. But again. that's my point. What's the rush? You have a boyfriend and you're thinking about marrying him. I know you are. Well, yeah, I'm a chick. We think about that. Well, but why? What is the rush? No rush. Yeah, there's a rush. You've already been married once. You're 27 years old. Yeah. What's the rush? Walk away from that guy, please. <laughs> okay. Was he following you around? Pretty much. Walk away. <laughs> Keep going. I don't want to hear this guy's voice. Sorry. If I hear one more syllable, I'm hanging up. I'm sorry. So, yeah, I think it's a great idea because during that marriage, we had several of his family members living with us. Well, I don't know why you tolerated that. Yeah, I don't know either, but I'm just glad it's over. Well, and uh, you don't want that happening again? Hell no. All right, well, I'd put that in a prenup. Yeah, definitely. Okay. All right, thanks, Tom. Thank you. What a pain in the ass. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. I'm trying to be helpful. Goddamn guy talking loudly in the background. I want to hear his conversation. Stop it. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, it is a pleasure to talk to you. I know. Hey, I got a question for you. I'm, uh, I live in Riverside, and I'm uh, going to be taking a weekend trip up to, um, you know, like where solving is. Yeah. Okay, solving Santa Inez, and, and you know, it's been probably about eight years since I've been there last, and eight years ago I couldn't drink or anything. So I'm kind of looking for a real nice restaurant, you know, something I could take my wife up to. And What do you want to eat? Uh, you know, my wife's not a fan of, like, fish, so something probably like a real nice steakhouse. Well, I mean, in, uh, in the next town over, Bulton, that's the hitching post. Yeah, that's where that, uh, that pea soup place is, isn't it? No, that's Anderson's uh, the Hotel. Oh, okay. No, it's uh, it's near there, but it's uh, a separate place. The Hitching Post is the name of the restaurant. The Hitching Post. Hitching Post. It is on the south side of Highway 246. On 246. Which is the main drag in Solvang and Bulton. And right. And there's an exit for 246 on the 101 freeway. Yes, yeah, I've been off of that note, note pretty well. No, but it's right. Uh, it's really literally half a mile or less from the exit of the 101. Okay, perfect. And if you're staying in Solvang, you're just tooling down 246, and 
Uh, up there on your left, you'll see the hitching post. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Tom. Can you uh, take me out Amtrak style? Amtrak style? I don't know what that would be. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. How do you, we need to put a bankrupt railroad sound effect. What would that be? Some bankrupt federal railroad sound effect? I don't think so. I don't think we have anything like that. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Diane. Do we have time for Diane? Yes, yeah, put Diane on. Diane! Hello! Hi, we have a minute, so let's get to it. Okay, I'll talk fast. Good. Okay, I have a 23-year-old son. He is recently back in my life. He's been kind of on the road. I was widowed with him at 14 years old after his dad died, and he's been kind of a slow-moving kid. So now he doesn't like driving. He's got a bit of ADHD. He gets panic attacks. He's got a lot of anxiety about life in general. How do you motivate a kid to to drive and to be a little more responsible. Well, you let him get into this position in the first place because you were soft on him in the first place, right? You're absolutely right. That's what my boyfriend says. Well, your boyfriend is right. Uh, it's kind of hard once that uh, horse leaves the barn to get him to come back in now, isn't it? The Tom Likas Show.